Alrighty, I have another short animation tutorial here and I want to cover this chaining animations which is where we're going to have one animation go into another animation. I'm trying to cover some of these little tasks in separate videos because I feel like they're useful but they'll never get found if they're buried inside of a you know full-fledged battle system tutorial. So that's why I'm doing it this way and we can apply that in the next tutorial as well. So I've created the animation here on lock. So the spin animation is just like it sounds. You have these four frames here. He spins around once. At the end of a battle, when you win the battle in Final Fantasy VI, if you watch in slow motion, as I always do, you will see him spin around once, and all the characters will kind of do this down the line. And then they go into that fanfare animation everybody knows so well. One thing I want to mention here is you'll see this is a little jerky right here. This goes back to something I mentioned in the uh, previous tutorials where... The animation tree will kind of interfere. It tries to do its thing while you're making a new animation. So I do have this on a separate animation player. But you'll see when I disable that animation tree, this is for the overworld animations, by the way, that's trying to interfere with it. He no longer jerks. This movement is the way I would expect it to be. So just so you know, it's going to look like that when I test it. Um, I'm going to leave it on for now. But the solution to this is probably disable this animation tree when you go into battle and probably have a separate tree as well if that's necessary. But anyway, if you see that, that's why. But anyway, so now in code, we've got these two animations. We've got the uh, spin and the fanfare. So the fanfare loops, right? So it's going over and over and over again, but the spin only happens once. So what we really want the animation to be is this and then the fanfare animation and only the fanfare looped. So that's why these are separate. And Godot does provide us a very nice way to do that. And it's all right here. Uh, so I, I've just attached this to the character controller script. Um, with a UI cancel so that way I can just press a button to test this anywhere. So all I'm doing here is getting that battle animation player that has those two animations just made. If you put an animation by its name in the queue here then just like it sounds it goes into the queue so I don't even have to hit play on this just putting it in the queue will fire it off and then right afterwards you queue up the fanfare. So what this will do is it'll play the spin animation and when the spin animation is done next in the queue is the fanfare and since the fanfare is a looping animation it will just keep going until we stop it. So if this is at the end of the battle of course we would stop it when we instantiate the next scene or whatever we you know go to their idle walk animation or whatever it may be. So let's test this out in Godot. I'm not even going to have to go in battle. I just put it on that button so I could test it. So let's play. All right, just going to press the cancel button. Yep, and there we got the spin, and now he's doing his little fanfare dance. <laughs> 